Welcome to the HR TaylorMade Live Series, Conversations with Consultants. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Slater, and I'm the CEO of HR TaylorMade, the HR solution for small businesses. With these conversations, we hope to make it very clear that you don't have to continue to wear all the hats in your organization. There are so many amazing consultants that are available and willing and want to help you so that you can get back to doing all the things that you do well in your business. And so I'm so excited today to introduce my guest. She is a woman that I have long looked up to, I admire and love very dearly. She is my aunt, and I'll tell you what I call her a little bit later, but her real name, as, as, as the old folks might say, her government name <laughs> is Lathea Morris, and we affectionately call her Aunt Bunny. Yes. Yes. How Good morning. You? Good morning, niece. How are you this morning? I am great. It's always good to see you and chat with you. And I'm so excited to introduce you to the world. And so we can talk about all things MNL.com. Yes. So to get started, why don't you introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Well, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Lothia Morris, also known as Aunt Bunny. Uh, I am the uh, founder and principal of MNL.com. And MNL.com was established uh, a couple of years mm -hmm. right before the uh, financial crisis we mm -hmm. had back in 2008 and 2009. And my signature service is financing solutions for real estate investors and small business owners. My goal is to help real estate investors grow their portfolio mm -hmm. and small businesses to grow their business. That's the signature service. That's what we focus on. And that's what we do. I love it. Okay, so now let's take it back a little bit because I, I definitely want to dig into m and and I want to know how you help small business and real estate investors get the funding that they need to realize their financial goals and dreams. But I want to know, how did you get started on your entrepreneurial journey? Well, you know I know, but I want the world to know. <laughs> All right. Well, actually, you know, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I guess it started when I was a little girl and had a lemonade stand. <laughs> I sold lemonade and cookies and made a lot of money and I remember mom saying to me, you know, you just may be a little business owner when you get older. Well, it actually happened. Uh, mm -hmm. I, when I graduated from school, I actually started off in the insurance industry and i love being in the insurance industry i worked in claims i was a vice president for a very well-known insurance company on wall street in new york city but i knew eventually i wanted to start my own business well i loved the insurance company and i actually had a short stint in government for a while I worked for the Whitman administration at the Department of State. I left there in 1993, and I actually became a full-time entrepreneur. But even before becoming a full-time entrepreneur, I was moonlighting as an entrepreneur when I was at the State Department and even at the insurance company that I worked for. So, you know, that's how I really started off as an entrepreneur. And my first company that I co-founded along with my husband, Morlino, was a consumer and business credit management services company. <laughs> and it evolved from there. Uh, we had the opportunity to start doing workshops and seminars for banks, <laughs> colleges and universities uh, brought us on to do workshops. And our customers started asking us about financing, getting loans. And that's pretty much how that evolved to where I am today. 
Yeah. And you know what's really cool about that is so many people um, start a business or know that they want to start a business and they're like, I don't know what to do or I don't know where I'm supposed to be 20 years from now. Just start doing something because when you start moving, you'll start picking up momentum in one area or another and you will eventually catch your rhythm and start doing that which you are supposed to do. So I love how you started in one place and ended up here in financial uh, solutions. So how did you get here? How did it evolve to what it is today, mnl.com? Yeah, well, you know, as I was saying, customers started asking us about financing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, real estate investor financing, mortgages, because for a short while, I was actually offering mortgages for consumers. I didn't stay with that too long because I found that, you know, I am better suited to work with business owners. I'm better suited to work with, you know, customers who are looking to buy investment properties or, you know, business owners that are looking to grow their business and they need financing in order to do that. So I knew that, oh, I said, I just love this because I love to order the deal. I love structuring financial solutions for my customers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I work with all types of customers. I work with uh, startup business owners. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of financing products out there for uh, startups. But, you know, I can lead them to some areas and products that may be able to help them. And I also work with all types of investors, meaning that I work with investors that are buying their first property to investors who are buying their 50th property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I made sure that I had products that were available for all types of investors and small business owners because, mm -hmm. you know, when a customer starts asking you for a product or can you get that? You know, it's best to look into that. So I actually really did my research to determine, okay, what's the best way to start offering financing solutions? Do I want to only work with one lender? Do I want to work with a traditional lender? Or do I want to work with a variety of lenders since I work with a variety of business owners, investors nationwide? Yeah. And of course, I landed on it's best to, to have a relationship with a variety of uh, lending options. Yeah. So what what about there's so many people doing Airbnbs right now. Do you work with individuals who buy properties for the purpose of Airbnb or does it matter what they're going to use the, the property for? Well, uh, the answer to that is yes and yes. Okay. I, as a matter of fact, I just closed a deal for a uh, an investor in Virginia. He does a, he bought a property not too far from the beach in Virginia, and it was an Airbnb property. But what he did was he needed to rehab it, so he purchased the property, he rehabbed it, and then he started advertising the property. And he has had several customers up to this point. So yes. You know, we do offer a product for those investors who are looking to invest in Airbnb top properties. But we also offer uh, lending uh, solutions for investors who are looking to fix and flip. Mm -hmm. They purchase and rehab and maybe they want to rent for cash flow purposes. Or, as I said, they fix and flip. They sell the property after rehab. Yes. We also work with those customers who buy multifamilies. Uh, anytime you're buying a multifamily that's five plus units, that puts you into the commercial category of lending. And oftentimes investors kind of get confused about commercial financing versus residential financing. Okay. There is a difference. And, you know, there, and when I talk about it being a difference, I mean, the product is actually different for each lender. Because when it comes to private lending, there are so many nuances involved in the world of real estate investing. Mm -hmm. And so I try to educate as best as I can 
potential customers and my customers on what these differences are. So when they're developing their strategy, they're developing a strategy, obviously, to grow a portfolio, correct? Yeah. So in order to do that uh, accurately, it's important for them to understand what their challenges may be with each type of financing solution. Gotcha. That's really helpful. I didn't know that there was a difference. I just figured lending is lending. No. <laughs> a loan is a loan. It, it, it is not. <laughs> well, I, sometimes I wish it was, but then in, in a way, I'm kind of glad it's not because if it was, if it was cookie cutter, mm -hmm. like traditional lenders have a tendency to offer cookie cutter type financing programs. Mm -hmm. But with the private lenders that I work with, if they were all cookie cutters, I would only be able to offer my services to a specific type of investor or small mm -hmm. business owner and not give everybody practically an option for financing. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's that's really good. Well, Bunny, what is the biggest challenge you've seen small business owners struggle with as it relates to funding? Oh, wow. Well, oftentimes business owners don't educate themselves about the financing product mm -hmm. that they're looking to apply for. Mm -hmm. They assume that if they complete an application, many, not some, not all, but many, if they complete an application, that's all they need to do. But guess what? You need to check your credit because lenders have a minimum credit score that you must have in order to even be considered for a loan. Mm -hmm. Lenders also want you to be in business for a certain amount of time before they will consider you for a loan. They also, some lenders, want you to generate a certain amount of income mm -hmm. before they will consider you for a loan. And with SBA loans, they want most SBA lenders, because you know with SBA lenders, lenders create a, their own policy. The mm -hmm. SBA just guarantees the loan. But lenders, gotcha. those lenders can differ. They create their own policy. And many lenders want to see that, you know, you had a gain on your income, on your income taxes mm -hmm. for the last couple of years and that you didn't have a loss. So, you know, that escapes many uh small business owners when they are applying for a, a loan and i try to drill that in these are the things that you really you know have to pay close attention to and it's also important to determine if they have the capacity to take on additional financing or even their first loan so you know those are some of the things that you know they really need they really need to consider now they've got loan products out there for yeah. just about anybody they've mm -hmm. got low credit score loans but guess what when you get a low credit score loan you're going to pay for it yeah so you have to expect that so you yeah. have to determine is it a good idea for you to take out this loan now is that going to help you really reach your goal it may but then it may not mm -hmm. And when you say they're going to pay for it, you mean in terms of the interest rate? In terms of the interest rate, probably in and, and maybe even in terms of the fees mm -hmm. that they have to pay, you know, in addition to a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be the type of loan where they may have to make a payment daily. Mm -hmm. Some business owners are not prepared to do that. Some business owners even want to make a payment every two weeks or monthly, but not necessarily daily. Yeah. So, you know, they've got all types of loan products out there, but mm -hmm. it's up to the business owner to determine mm -hmm. what is going to work best for me and my strategy. Yeah. Well, Bunny, so let's stay with that one. So for, for, for individuals that have low credit scores who need funding for their business, how can they use those high interest loans to their benefit? Well, if they have a specific purpose, mm -hmm. let's say that a business owner uh, offers products mm -hmm. and they need to purchase inventory and they need and they have a low credit score, 
and they meet all of the other criteria. Well, the inventory that they're going to purchase, well, hopefully they're going to sell that inventory. So that's going to help them to be ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. But if a business owner will take out a loan and there's no real specific purpose, and there are some business owners that, that will say, I need to take out a loan, and I don't have a real specific purpose for it right now, but mm -hmm. I know I eventually will, but just not not right now. I don't suggest a low interest, uh, a low credit score uh, banking product, but I do in an instance like that, if they can, uh, I recommend a line of credit. Yeah. Because with the line of credit, you can pull down on that line of credit when you need to use it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need to know specifically what are you going to use that money for mm -hmm. and how can it help to take your business to the next level? Yes. Yes. Love that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So what's the, what is the greatest gift that you've received from being an entrepreneur? Switching gears just a little bit. Okay. Well, you know what? With me, I like the independence. So mm -hmm. for, for, for me, that's a gift. <laughs> okay. I like the independence. I like doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the control that I have. So I know that's probably more than one gift, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's what I like about being an entrepreneur. And you know what, when I graduated from college, Tiffany, I graduated and I think you know this with my undergraduate degree, well, in sociology mm -hmm. and I had a minor in small business. So that kind of like helping people part of me you know it's part of what i do when i'm providing the kind of information to investors and business owners that they need to know mm -hmm. in order hopefully to grow their business mm -hmm. so i i really like that i mean i was on the phone for almost 45 minutes the other day with one of my investors He's a new investor and he's just so confused about a lot of things. Yeah. You know, one day he sends me an email and he says, I want to buy my first property now. Just uh, uh, going back a step, I helped him to get uh, funding, personal unsecured funding in order to start buying investment properties. Okay. So his whole thing is he wants to start in, uh, buying investment properties, right? And he also wants to be able to turn that property around, refinance it to get more money to buy the next property. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. a clear goal yeah. and strategy, right? But then he sends me another email saying that, oh, I want to buy a property, but it's a cash flow property. Now, that's a totally different strategy because there's a method in real estate investing that's called you ready? Get ready for this. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh is B R R R R. And Bruh stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. So that means you need to buy a property that needs to be rehabbed, right? And then rent it. And then you refinance it because as a result of refinancing it or rehabbing it, you have increased its value. Yeah. So as a result of increasing its value, you bought a property and it was $100,000 just mm -hmm. for simplistic purposes here. Mm -hmm. And you rehab it and now that property is worth $150,000. Mm -hmm. And you find a lender with the right seasoning, okay? And that lender will allow you to refinance and take out what the current value is. That's $150,000. Yeah. Okay. That they're looking at. So you're going to get an additional $50,000, which you can use to buy your next property. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just trying to, to calm him down a little bit. He's excited. 
He got a lot of money as a result of that personal unsecured financing I got him, right? So yeah. he's ready to spend. <laughs> like, but wait a minute. Okay. Right. So just trying to keep him on track. Okay. That's but those are some of the kinds of things that, you know, I enjoy. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like you not only help them with finding their funding solutions, but you also help them think through the the strategy behind making those investments work for them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, what is the best advice you can give to a business owner or investor looking for funding? Well, uh, again, with the uh, small business owners, the best advice is to do your homework. Yeah. Before you complete an application, do your mm -hmm. homework because understand every time you complete an application and you don't get that financing, an inquiry ends up on your credit report. Mm -hmm. And depending on how many applications you complete, okay, dictates how many inquiries, and I mean a hard inquiry, there are you know, a couple of different types of inquiries, hard mm -hmm. inquiries and soft inquiries. A hard inquiry can affect your credit score, whereas a soft inquiry will not. So do your homework, find out about that lender, find out about the type of industries they lend to, because you can go down the street to your bank, and if you don't bank there, and that's another thing, you should at least start off uh, at the bank where you bank at. But if you go down the street to a bank and they don't loan to your industry, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have completed an application and now you got an inquiry on your credit report mm -hmm. and they can't help you. So that's the, the number one thing you need to do when you're a business owner. When you are a real estate investor, you need to map, map out your strategy. You need to determine where do I want to buy? What type of property do I want to buy? What type of gains that's realistic that you want to expect for yourself? So those are all of the, you know, just a few things that a real estate investor needs to think about, you know, when they're determining, trying to determine which way do they want to go. They absolutely must have a strategy in place because actually with real estate investors, I mean, credit score is not, too much of a barrier. I mean, there are lenders that do have minimum credit scores. Mm -hmm. However, you can get loans with a credit score of 600 mm -hmm. in the world of real estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's always great for everybody to map out that strategy. You know, mm -hmm. but business owners do your homework, real estate investors develop that strategy to determine where you want to buy, what type of property you want to buy and what you want your gains to be and your and your ROI, okay? That's mm -hmm. return on investment. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for that, Bunny. And how can people reach you? Uh, people can reach me by going to my website at www.morlino, M-O-R-L-I-N-O, and A-N-D, Lathea, L-A-T-H-E-A.com. I love it. So there you have it, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to have had a conversation with you this morning, Aunt Funny Mathia Mars, about the financial solutions that you help small business owners and investors obtain. And I would love to have you back another time where we can maybe dive a little deeper into credit, because I know that for new entrepreneurs, understanding how credit impacts their how personal credit impacts their business credit can be a little confusing. And that's always a great conversation to have. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I can't wait to have a conversation with you another time. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for having me. Thank you. All right, you all, I know that you had to get some great and juicy gems out of that conversation because as always, I just love talking to my Aunt Bunny. But it's always a great conversation because she has some really, really great life experiences, great business um, acumen as well. So I hope that you were able to gather some great information. And again, as always, I appreciate you watching. And I am Dr. Tiffany Slater of HR Taylor Made, the HR solution for uh, small businesses. And be 
be sure to sign up for our newsletter and make sure that you tune in same time next week when I talk to my guest, small business attorney, Kristen, I'm sorry, Crystal Weagle. Don't forget, send me the questions that you want me to ask because I am here for them. And I am here to make sure that I get your questions answered. Until next time, be kind to yourself and thank you so much for watching.